In this video, we'll cover the more advanced features of MIG welding with the HDP Revolution 2500, such as pulse and double pulsed MIG. If you're looking for some of the more basic MIG welding features, they were covered in the previous video in this series. Let's get started by looking at pulsed MIG welding. I'll make sure that the machine is set to MIG 2T here. I'll press this button and cycle to pulsed MIG. Now once I've accepted pulsed MIG, I can select the material I'm going to be welding. In this case, I'll select aluminum and select the filler metal that you're going to use as well as the wire diameter. With those settings in, I am able to adjust my wire feed speed and thus material thickness just using the knob on the left, similar to Synergic MIG. The knob on the right will adjust the trim to increase or decrease voltage. Changing the trim will control the arc length here with pulsed welding. Notice the length of the arc cone here with the trim set to zero with the standard setting. With a trim of minus one, I have a shorter arc length and then if I go to a trim of minus two, it's an even shorter arc length with some occasional crackling and short circuiting of the arc. This machine is also capable of double pulsed MIG. When this process is selected, there are a similar set of menus to select the material and wire type as well as the wire diameter. Now you can once again adjust amperage or wire feed speed and the voltage will follow. However, there isn't a recommended thickness because the overall heat input depends on the pulse parameters. With the double pulse process active, there's this additional menu to control a low frequency pulse that's overlapped on top of the high frequency pulse ray transfer. The first setting controls how many pulses per second there are, such as one hertz here, one cycle per second. This controls the percentage of time that's at your actual set wire speed and amperage. Finally, this setting controls the percentage of your set amperage or set wire feed speed that you will run when you're not at that peak time. With those parameters set, you can return home and it's ready to weld. With any of the processes, you can also run in the MIG 4T mode. This simply allows you to press and release the trigger to start and press and release it to stop. The MIG 4TS mode introduces a sequencer which allows you to run through a number of different amperage settings throughout your weld. This setting is active as soon as you press the trigger. So when you press and hold the trigger, in this case, it will run at 130% of your set amperage. It'll remain there until you release the trigger, at which point it will ramp down over the period of time set here at T2 to your set amperage. You can adjust this to slope down more gradually. Now it'll weld with the trigger released until you press it one more time, at which point it will ramp down over this T3 period of time to your final amperage, which is set here at a certain percentage of your set wire speed or amperage. And it will remain there until you release the trigger. This sequence is particularly useful when MIG welding aluminum because the base metal heats up significantly over the length of the weld joint. Another way to vary your amperage over the length of a weld joint is by using an optional slider. The slider will connect to the same remote port that you'd use for a foot pedal for TIG welding and you can activate it in the setup menu by cycling down to this setting and pressing change. With the slider connected to the MIG gun, set it at its maximum amperage and then go over to the machine and you can set the wire feed speed or amperage to be at the maximum setting that you would like it to be at. At this point, you can control your wire speed or your amperage throughout the length of the weld simply by using the slider so that you can begin with a higher setting than you use at the end after your aluminum has soaked with heat. Those are the more advanced MIG welding features of the HTP Revolution 2500.